Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today I'm gonna to walk you through my top 10 tips for the Canon C70. Tip number one is setting up your custom menus. So to set up the custom menus, all you need to do is go over to this star menu and I'll show you my custom menu. I have sensor mode, main record format, frame rate, main resolution, second card, custom picture profile, recording mode, slow and fast frame rate, digital IS, and LUT. So let's say you wanna set up your custom menus. All you need to do is just hit edit. Uh, if, you, if you haven't done this before, it would just be empty. So go to the page that you wanna set it up on. So let's say I wanna add something to page two. You just hit edit, register. Let's say I wanna set up fine increment. You just hit register it, okay. Process complete. So once you use the camera a little bit and you find yourself always going back to the same settings, it'll help speed up your process if you can automate all those things and put them all in. And what I actually did is all the cameras that I have, all the Canon Cinema cameras, the C500, the C200, the C70, I set up the same structure on that custom menu. So no matter which camera I pick up or anyone on my team picks up, you always know where you can find all your main settings. Tip number two is using your assignable buttons. So the camera comes default with all these settings right here set to some preset factory things. And for the most part, they're pretty good. However, I do like to change mine. So um, I'll actually go and I keep the white balance on this second button here though. I should change this one to 120 frames per second mode. So if I hit that with one touch or 60 frames per second, depending on what I want my slow motion to be, one touch and it'll actually switch the frame rate over. And then I press it one time again and it switches back. A couple of the other ones I have that are not uh, factory, you could say, is on the peaking button. I set this one up to turn off and on the LUT. So I'll just kind of show that real quick. Um, there's no LUT, there's the LUT. And the reason I like that is if I'm on set and I wanna see if there's still information in the highlights, I can just turn the LUT off real quick and you can see if there's actually information in the highlights anymore. Another one I find really helpful is this button right here. This is button 11 and can you see that? Yeah, button 11. So what I do when I'm shooting is I'll have my hand right here and with my middle finger, I'll actually use that. It'll toggle between the normal tracking autofocus on the wide bracket and then if I press it one time, it goes to face only. So I find that really useful if I'm gonna be like in an interview setting or I'm up close where the autofocus can track someone it'll be great. And then if they get a little too far out of range, I just tap that button one time and then it jumps over to the wide brackets tracking and it's able to track them with much more consistency. Tip number three is setting up audio backup tracks. So one of the cool things about the C70 is it's got two channels of mini XLR. So all you need to get from the mini XLR to the normal XLR is just these little cables. So I'll go ahead and link those in the description below, but then you can just use it like a fully normal cinema camera. So if you wanna use like a lav on one channel and a shotgun on another, you can actually set up backup tracks for both those as well. So all you need to do is navigate in the menu to the little audio section. You go to audio input selection. You can choose input terminals or mic terminals. So mic would be the 1 8 inch input. This would be like a Rode Video Mic Pro or something like that. And then if you select input terminals, I have my uh, mic plus 48 on, which is phantom power. So that's great if you wanna use something like a Rode NTG3 or NTG5 or any, any sort of uh, phantom powered mic. And then you can set up backup tracks. You just select channel three and four and you put that on input terminals as well. So then that way you've got a safety track. So if someone starts speaking really loudly and it clips on audio track one or audio track two, you've got a backup track on channel three of channel one, and you've got a backup track of channel two on channel four. And what I usually do is I'll set those about 12 to 15 decibels lower. That way if anybody yells or starts clapping or does something really loud, then you've really got a nice safe track and you can just boost up and post. Tip number four is a really short and sweet one. It's increasing the brightness of your screen. All you need to do is navigate to the screen settings and ironically enough, it's not LCD brightness, like one might think. It's LCD luminance. So all you need to do is turn it from normal, click it up to, and your screen's gonna be significantly brighter. Tip number five is using an external monitor with the C70. So one of the weird quirks with the C70 is 
it only has an HDMI output and it doesn't have an SDI output. So that's sort of half the battle. <laughs> but the other half is for whatever reason, you can't output a LUT like the Rec. 709 LUT like you can set in camera out over the HDMI output. So all you need to do is most monitors can input LUTs. So if you have something like a Ninja 5, like I have right here, or a Shinobi, or any type of small HD monitor, or even most of the off-brands, for example, can also input LUTs as well. So the process is gonna be a little bit different for each one, but all I have to do for the Ninja 5 is you download this LUT right here. I'll go ahead and link it in the description below, or any of your custom LUTs, and you put them on the root drive, then you just input them right onto your monitor. So that's one of the cool things when you're using an external monitor. That way you, won't, you can look at a Rec. 709 image instead of looking at a flat C-log image. One other tip is you, you will wanna make sure that you have a camera that's capable of recording 4K 60. So I did have to try a few cables. The one that I found that works really well is this cable right here. It's super thin and light and it's really flexible. So I find it's really good for gimbal use or if you're just using the monitor on top of the camera, it's good for that as well and it supports 4K 60. So I will leave a link to that in the description as well. Tip number six is a post-production tip for the C70. So everything I shoot is in C-Log2, unless it's literally something I'm not even gonna edit. I'm just gonna deliver to a client and they need Rec. 709 for whatever reason. But I'd say 99% of what I shoot is in C-Log2. The reason for that is it has the most dynamic range. Some people out there will tell you that C-Log3 is easier to grade or something like that. I disagree. All you need to do is just put a LUT on the C-Log2 footage and you can get it looking really solid right out of camera with really minimal tweaks. One tip though, I would recommend not using the Canon provided LUTs. The only time I use those is if I'm matching other cameras and those cameras have to shoot with the baked in Canon profile. What I personally use, this is a shameless plug, but I, I created some LUTs that I use for all my personal work. I do sell those LUTs, I will link them below. There's other good LUTs out there though too. I would just recommend not using the ones that come from Canon for a number of reasons. Not only because um, the image is subjective, you know, whether you like the way it looks or you don't like the way it looks, that's up to you. But what's not subjective is dynamic range. And when you use the Canon LUTs, you actually lose highlight and shadow detail. I find that it really quips the highlights pretty harshly. And that was some feedback I got on my Komodo versus C70 video. I was using the Canon LUTs. People said it looks really video-ish or um, you know, not cinematic or whatever. And I agree, I really do. So it, what I found is uh, the LUTs make a huge difference. Uh, the LUTs I created, they've got a pretty smooth highlight roll off and I do like the way they look. So if you like them, check them out. Um, but if not, I would just recommend finding some other ones other than the Canon ones. Tip number seven is a pretty cool one with the C70. This is actually, as far as I know, it's unique to just this camera, all the flexibility you get with choosing your recording options. So. In order to choose your recording options, you just navigate to this little third section here and you select main record format. So I'm typically, I'm always recording actually in XFAVC 422 10-bit. And you can select, this is 4K, or if you want the 17 by nine DCI 4K, this is usually what I'm recording in right here. Now, when you wanna pick your second card function, you go to submenu three this first setting is the second card does nothing, which is obviously, that's fine if you just have one card. If you have a second card, you can go main card, you can go main recording on the first card, and then your second card will record a proxy. So this is gonna record a low, really low bit rate proxy that's easy for editing. So it's good for like an online offline workflow. The second option here is main recording on card one and sub recording on card two. Now the difference is your sub recording is actually a 10 bit 422 file. So it's kind of nice if say you want like a high resolution version for some client work, but then you maybe want to go back and grab some B-roll for say like a YouTube video like I do. You can set, you can use that setting and you can just use the 1080 files because maybe you don't need the full resolution and you just prefer to have a little bit smaller files to deal with. And then the third option is relay recording. So if you're recording a really long event or say like a long interview or something like that, you can set relay recording. That way it'll record, um, it'll fill the full card for the first one, and then it'll start filling up the second card once the first card is full, and it's not gonna cut your recording. The last option is double slot recording. So this will record full resolution to both cards. This is really nice if you want an automatic backup of a file, 
and maybe you're recording something really important and you know that you can't reshoot that, that's a great setting to use. And actually for all my commercial work, that's the one that I use. Tip number eight is what I would consider one of the best kept secrets of the Canon Cinema line. It's called fine iris increment. So it's actually on the first menu there and the first sub menu. And if you just go to iris increment, usually it's in one third stops. So if you're changing your iris, you'll see it like click from one third stops, which is pretty noticeable. So you can actually put it on fine iris increment. And I'm not positive this works with every single lens, but with all the lenses that I have and that I've tested, it does work. But what's cool about this setting is it almost makes it look like you're pulling your iris off a cinema lens. So with a cinema lens, it's got really smooth iris transitions. So say you were gonna do something like you're walking from inside to outside or outside to inside. Oftentimes what you'd have to do is when you go from outside to inside, you'd have to open up your iris and it's gonna show a lot in the footage. You'll see it quick. Now here it is again, same exact thing, same exact setting with the fine iris increment on. And notice how smooth that was. It's really not nearly as jarring for the viewer and it's just like it would be if it was on a cinema lens. Tip number nine is a short and sweet one. The C70 has 10 stops of internal ND, but for whatever reason, when you get it from the factory, it can only go up to six. Really simple setting. All you need to do is go into that first menu, extended ND range, and you're just gonna switch that into on. And then it's gonna enable all 10 stops of the NDs. Tip number 10 is a super quick walkthrough of the autofocus settings on the C70. There's been a whole lot of talk on the internet about the, how the C70 doesn't have the best autofocus. And while I certainly agree that tracking autofocus is not the best at all, there's what kind of ways around it that I found. And I have found the C70's autofocus, if you're already used to the Canon Cinema line, like the C200, the C300 Mark III, the C500 Mark II, which are much more expensive cameras, excluding the C200, it operates pretty much the same. Now I will say it's not nearly as good for tracking autofocus as something like an R5, a 1DX Mark III, or even a 6D Mark II. I have found that it's just much easier to operate with a single touch, but that's that. I don't work for Canon. I just want, I use the cameras and I want to know how to operate them the best that they can with the current firmware. So, you know, Canon, if somehow you're listening, we would love one touch tracking autofocus on all the cinema cameras, but that's not what we're talking about right now. What I found are the two best settings for me are the face only autofocus when I'm doing any type of interview subject where the subject is relatively close and well exposed. And when the subject is not as close to me or is a little bit further away, I'll use the wide bracket tracking. So this is a continuous autofocus setting. And what you need to do is just keep them in the middle of this bracket right here. Anytime they're in the middle of the bracket, they're gonna be in focus. If you let the bracket get off them though, it'll jump to the background. In a circumstance like this, I would always be using the face only autofocus. It's really good for any time you have a well-lit subject and it's easy for the autofocus to track them and you're relatively close to the subject and their face is pretty prominent in the frame. If the face is kind of turned sideways or it's really small in the frame or they're really far back from the camera, the autofocus will definitely struggle. Another tip I have when using the face only autofocus is I generally keep one hand with my thumb right here. So at any point in time, I can just flick it to manual focus and take over. And then when I'm ready for the camera, when it grabs the face, you'll see it put the square box around the face. You can just flick it back to autofocus and let it do the tracking for you. And then that way, you know, if your camera's having a hard time, you can always take over manual. So it's almost like, like a, mostly autofocus, like a 75% autofocus. The other 25% can be you. And this is actually a really nice transitional tool. If you're kind of just learning to manually focus for the first time, this can be a good benefit for you. And you can practice your manual focus. And if you find you're not doing so great, you can always just pop it back on the autofocus. All right, guys. So those are my top 10 tips for the C70. I'd love to know what are your favorite settings and what are your favorite tips? Feel free to drop those in the comments and we can all help each other out. So if you like this kind of content, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.